In today's video, I'm gonna break down the differences between DNP, NP, MSN, all the different letters that tend to come with nursing degrees. They're very confusing. Nursing loves alphabet soup, and I'm hoping to kind of demystify some of that today and give you some clarification on what all the letters mean and give you the difference between a degree, certification, and licensure, because that's really what it boils down to. If you're new here, welcome, I'm Liz. I'm a family nurse practitioner, and I do weekly content videos like these every Tuesday, and on Saturdays I have a vlog documenting my life in and out of work as an FMP. If that sounds fun or this is helpful, consider subscribing, I'd love to have you, and head over to Instagram where I post lots of goodies throughout the week. All right, to make this a little bit easier, I thought we would kind of dissect the letters that come after my name at this point in time so we can understand the concept a little bit better. So after my name, you would see MSN because I have my master's of science in nursing, APRN, which is my license. My, I'm an advanced practice registered nurse licensed in the state of North Carolina and FNPC. because I'm a family nurse practitioner certified through AANP. All right. So let's try to dissect this just a little bit. The big three things we're going to be focusing on here today are your degree, your licensure and your certification. Your degree is the education you obtain, obviously, that supports your role. So for me, I have an MSN, a Master's of Science in Nursing. That education taught me how to be a nurse practitioner. Before that, I had a BSN, a Bachelor of Science in Nursing, and that taught me how to be a nurse. Degrees in nursing are very confusing because there are many different degrees that can grant you the same end product. For example, you can have your ADN, your MSN, or your BSN, to, that allow you to sit for your NCLEX and become a registered nurse. And if you're looking at nurse practitioner, CRNA, midwife, you can have your MSN or your DNP in order to accomplish that end goal. So if you're feeling very confused, please don't feel bad. Nursing makes this very, very complicated, nearly impossible to decipher, and it's not at all user-friendly, especially if you are just trying to enter the field and haven't been immersed in it. It sometimes confuses me, and I have been in this realm for like nine years, so, please don't feel bad. It is not you, it is the system. All right, going back to degrees, my tangent is done for now. So one of the biggest questions I get that involves your degree is what is the difference between should I get my DNP or my NP? This is where I think one of the biggest failings is because DNP is a degree, it's your doctorate of nursing practice. It's very confusing because DNP has NP in it, but you can have your doctorate of nursing practice in a lot of different subjects. You can be a CRNA with a DNP, you can be a midwife with a DNP. A DNP is not subject specific. You still have to pick a major. We'll call them majors right now. That's easier than saying your education specialization. It, we're just gonna call them majors. I don't think that's technically what you call them in grad school, but today we're gonna call them majors. So in answering that question, the difference between your DNP and your NP, NP is a certification, it's an type of education, that's what your education has been focused on, whereas your DNP is your degree that was awarded to you, and it can be in lots of different subjects. Now, while we're here, I wanna to touch really quick on the two big buckets that people usually fall into, and that first one is nurses. What do I need to take the NCLEX and become an RN? What education or degree would support that? That would be, like we said, an ADN, your associate's degree, your BSN, your Bachelor of Science in Nursing, and now they even have an MSN program that can prepare you to be a nurse. And the second bucket would, what would I need in order to be an advanced practice provider? So that's gonna be things like a nurse practitioner, a nurse midwife, and a CRNA. And those all require you to have your MSN, your Master of Science in Nursing, or your DNP. And again, you have to pick a focus of your MSN or your DNP that trains you in your specialty. Next. Certification. This is something that we need to do as a nurse. It's something we have to do as a nurse practitioner, a midwife, a CRNA, all of that. And that's the examination not affiliated with your school that says, yep, we decided that you take this test and somehow you know how to do this job. Even though I don't really feel like tests assess your ability to do the job very well, it's fine. That's how we do it and we're gonna move on. And this is the part of the alphabet soup that denotes your specialty. For registered nurses, this is your RN. And in the United States, the registered nurse title does not need any further specialization. So you graduate with your BSN, or your MSN, or your ADN, whatever you chose under your degree bucket. You went over here and you took the NCLEX. That is the test that every nurse in the United States has to take in order to become a registered nurse. And after you pass that, you get to put RN after your name. 
awesome. If you're a nurse practitioner, your credentials are going to be specified to the type of NP you are. So for example, I'm a family nurse practitioner. So mine are FNP and I took the AANP exam. So my initial is FNPC. Again, nursing is confusing because family nurse practitioners could also sit for the ANCC exam and their letters would look like FNP BC. Both of these are certifying exams for family nurse practitioners in this country. Why we have two, who knows? but we do. Now, depending on your specialty that you went to school for, you're gonna take a different board exam. So adult Jero is gonna take one, women's health is gonna take a different one, pediatrics, they're all gonna take different board exams and they're all certified through different bodies because we can't be simple. <laughs> Are you picking up on this yet? Are you picking up on it? Because it drives me crazy. Nurse midwives and CRNAs also take certifying board exams through their certifying entity. I'm not those things, so I'm not sure what they are. There we go. That's a little bit about certification and you need that and your degree in order to do this next step, licensure. This is the final like cherry on top. In order to practice, whether you're a nurse or a nurse practitioner, a midwife, a CRNA, you have to be licensed in the state that you live in. I should have said the state that you are working in, not live in, side note by the state's board of nursing. And in order to be licensed, you have to have a degree that supports what you're trying to get licensed in and a certification. So for nurses, this would be BSN, ADN, MSN in nursing. And your certifying board exam, which is the NCLEX, you take this and a lot of other information to your state board of nursing, like your fingerprints and your background check and every street you've ever lived on. And then they say, yes, you are licensed in the state of North Carolina to go forth and be a nurse. Pay us some money every few years and we'll let you keep doing it. Likewise, if you want to become an advanced practice provider, which is NP, CRNA, nurse midwife, first they look and say, are you licensed in this state as a nurse? Because you have to be licensed as a nurse before you can be an advanced practice registered nurse. And then they say, give me more money. Show me that you went back to school for your MSN or DNP in a specializing area and that you took the exam saying, yes, this person knows what they're doing. And then tell us a whole bunch of other information and we will allow you to be an advanced practice provider in this state and we will license you as such confusing here again, because different states have chosen different letters to license advanced practice providers, depending on what state you live in. So I'm an APRN, other people in their state are an ARNP, some are like a CRNP, very confusing. I have no idea why we can't nationally just be like, hey, this is what we're gonna like license nurse practitioners at. Again, we won't go there today. And once you have all of this, you have your license, you have your certification and your degree. Now you may go forth and get a job as a nurse or a nurse practitioner and you are fully licensed under that state. It's not confusing at all, is it? It's great. All right, let's talk really quick about how you put these in order after your name because this is something that's really important to do is know how to you know, put your alphabet soup together. So first, your name, Elizabeth. Second, you're gonna put your degree. You always put your highest degree. It looks the best, it's fancy, use it. MSN in my case. And if you need help remembering that your degree comes first, think of it as you earned your degree, no one can take it away from you unless you've done something like horrible. Hug it close to your name, your credentialing and your licensure, you can really mess up and that can they, they can take that away. So that goes towards the end of your name. So degree towards you. Next in this lineup is your licensure, APRN. This is where in other states it might be, you know, CRNP, ARNP, whatever we talked about. A lot of people don't even bother to list their licensure. Your state board of nursing will actually dictate if you need to list it or not, fun fact. And for nurses, your licensure is your RN, and that is actually all you have to include. And next in the certifications, we're going to list FNPC because I'm a family nurse practitioner and I need to specify the type of APRN that I am. Again, if you're a nurse, you wouldn't have to list anything here unless you've gone on to take additional specialty exams such as the CCRN, which show that you are extremely competent in your specialized area of nursing. And there we go. That's how you string all the letters along. You always want, I get a lot of questions asking if you need to list RN once you have like your FNP and you do not, because in order to be an APRN, you have to be an RN. So your new license kind of gobbles up the other one and it's like, yeah, yeah, we know you're a nurse because you are a nurse practitioner, if that makes sense. All right, guys, hopefully that gave you a little bit of clarification. I know this is a super complicated topic. If you have any other questions on it, let me know down below in the comment section. 
If videos like this are helpful for you, again, consider subscribing. I do content ones like this every single Tuesday, and I'll leave some additional videos that I think you might enjoy at the end. Don't forget to head over to Instagram where I post all sorts of content throughout the week. And we always have a question of the day, which is what are your letters that come after your name? I think it would be helpful for people to be able to see what I'm actually talking about here with actual examples. So if you wanna write your letters out, if you wanna write your letters out and explain like kind of what they are, that would be even more helpful. But I think the thing that's gonna help people understand this the most and see the, so, the many, many different ways you can obtain the different things is just to see it a bunch of times because I know this confused me a ton. Thanks so much for watching today. Hope you have a fabulous rest of your week and I'll see you next time. Bye.